How are you all doing? Good, wonderful. Thank to see you all, and we want to welcome you all on, on behalf of the ADRC um, and UW-Madison. Uh, as you know, uh, we plan to share with you some of the exciting new developments, some new information that has come in the, in the, in the field of Alzheimer's research. Uh, but before we do that, we thought we'll give you a little background, just a few minutes background, of what the Wisconsin ADRC is. So, okay, great. Uh, you know that Alzheimer's disease is one of the most devastating and one of the very common diseases that affects people as they get older. Uh, in the United States alone, uh, currently we have over 5 million Americans who have this disease. But the unfortunate news is that unless we find some effective treatment or ways to prevent the disease, by about 2050, there'll be over 17 million Americans who will have the disease. Uh, and in Wisconsin alone, we have over 110,000 110, residents in Wisconsin have the disease. And by 2025, just in about eight years or so, or seven years or so, we may have over 130,000 people in Wisconsin alone with this disease. Uh, as a country, uh, this year, by the end of this year, we'll spend over $270 billion to care for people with this disease just in one year. So you can imagine the social and the economic impact of this disease on the healthcare system. So what is Wisconsin Alzheimer's Disease Research Center? So the ADRC uh, is a network of 32 ADRC that are funded by the National Institutes of Health. Raise your hand, how many of you know about National Institutes of Health or NIH? Wonderful. So as you know, NIH is the federal agency that funds medical research around the United States and around the world, actually many international uh, sites as well. And currently its annual budget is over $35 billion. And to get any support from NIH, you have to compete. And these competitions are pretty tough, as you can imagine. Multiple medical schools and universities and institutions want NIH funds. So ADRCs are funded through a competitive process by NIH, and the Wisconsin ADRC was funded in 2009 through an NIH grant. And then we had to go back again. Every five years, you had to resubmit your grant and compete for NIH grants. So in 2014, we competed and successfully got another five years of funding, which will end next year in April. I'm delighted to tell you all that in June of this year, we submitted a third grant, which we hope will do well, and we'll get funding to continue from 2019 to April 2024. And the great news is that we got a very uh, strong score on our application, and we think that the Wisconsin ADRC is almost certain will be renewed by NIH for another five years, and it'll go through April 2024. Now, what it does for us is to, is to allow us to do uh, some exciting research that is going on here and network with the other 32 centers in the country and advance the field of Alzheimer's disease with the ultimate aim of winning the disease. So the ADRC here provides extensive resources, infrastructure, and scientific expertise for people across UW-Madison campus. We have over 33 scientists at UW-Madison very few are in the medical school, many more are outside on the campus and other departments, all kinds of departments on campus, and they all work with us to eventually win this disease. So this is very exciting for Wisconsin. Now, the, uh, in the new grant cycle, uh, we have a couple of areas of new research. So we'll continue our research in biomarkers for Alzheimer's disease, which is the way how to diagnose the disease if someone uh, is asymptomatic, has no symptoms, but perhaps in the brain imaging scans or perhaps in this examination of the cerebrospinal fluid, we know that the disease is going on in these individuals. So these biomarkers are a major focus of our ADRC research. But in addition, we actually train multiple uh, investigators. In fact, in the last four years alone, we trained over 300 scientists, medical students, PhD scientists, and all kinds of other healthcare workers, nurses, pharmacists, social workers who come to ADRC to learn about Alzheimer's disease and do some research. So in the last four years alone, we trained over 300 such scientists at the ADRC and plan to do so in the next five years. Um, and also, we are going to launch 
patient care research programs in the ADRC here. Being the only geriatric-based ADRC in the United States, we do focus on research how to improve the care of people who are suffering from the disease. So in the next five years, we plan to launch multiple new studies under the leadership of Dr. Amy Kind uh, to do patient care research. And uh, many of you have, how many of you seen these images? These are PET brain scan images. Wonderful. So as you know, in Alzheimer's, at least we believe there are two abnormal proteins, the amyloid protein and the tau protein that, uh, that pro likely cause the disease, and one of the important causes for disease. And now we can image those protein through PET brain scan. So uh, on your right, this is amyloid protein that we can image in people now, and on the left, is the tau protein we can also image through PET brain scan. We can do them now in our ADRC. The good news is that this year, early part of this year in January or February, we got additional hundreds of thousands of dollars of grant from NIH to do PET brain scans on the ADRC research participants. And this will allow us to get over 500 such brain scans. Uh, each brain scan costs about $6,000 to $7,000. So you can imagine how much of fund NIH has given us to do these scans on over 500 people in ADRC. So that's very exciting as well. Uh, and finally, as uh, Carol mentioned to you, the medical school here has identified Alzheimer's disease along with cancer among their two top priorities to advance research. And to accomplish that, the school and the university, the chancellor has established the initiative to end Alzheimer's disease. For every research dollar we get from NIH, we have to raise another 42 cents to complete a project. NIH never gives you every dollar or cent that you need to do a project. You have to raise another 40% of funds to complete that study. So what the initiative will do is to help us uh, 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 generate philanthropic funds so that we can really do research, especially high risk research which sometimes NIH is reluctant to fund. It is through high-risk, innovative research that we will eventually find the cure and prevention for Alzheimer's disease. So the initiative to end Alzheimer's disease is a move by the campus and the medical school to generate fundraising and generate some philanthropic funds. Uh, so thank you for being here. And I would like to uh, invite and introduce Dr. Emily Rogalski, who are the keynote speaker for our evening today. Dr. Rogalski is internationally renowned for her research in super agers. These are the individuals who are resistant to getting Alzheimer's disease. Why are they resistant or protected from the disease? Her breakthrough work and research has actually made us understand why that is the case. Uh, Dr. Rogalski is a clinical neuroscientist at the Northwestern University Alzheimer's Center. Like our center, Northwestern University has one of the first Alzheimer's disease centers funded in the country. So they have over 20, 25 years of research experience, and Dr. Rogalski is a part of the center. We are honored and delighted to invite Dr. Rogalski to make her presentation. Emily. 